the final uh, moment before we let you go for food and, and coffee, it's time for what we call the signature uh, great, uh, the wit great debate, which closes our main conference in Singapore each year. So we run it for about 12 years now. Uh, the rules are simple. There are only two debaters, one for and one against, and then each gets three minutes to champion their side of the argument. I want to stress that this is totally done in the spirit of humor. It is not to be taken seriously, but you may learn a few things or two, but it's all in good humor. And uh, after the debate, I will ask you to help me pick the winner. The one who gets the louder applause wins. So I'm going to need you to cheer on these debaters. Um, the proposition this morning, the proposition is Asia slash China is a copycat. It is not an innovator. Please join me in welcoming our debaters. We have Martin Symes, who's our 10-year wit reigning champion and the very brave Alex Shern to take him on. So, before they begin, in considering your applause, these are the three factors we want you to think about, okay? Clarity in putting forth their argument. What? Clarity. You didn't tell me that. <laughs> Conviction, how convincing they were. And three, charisma. Did they charm you and change your mind about something? Okay, over to you, Martin. Three minutes and counting. Ladies and gentlemen, this morning I will use a combination of dubious logic and alternative facts to prove that Asia and especially China are copycats. Tremendous copycats. The worst kind. Sad. But first, I need to issue a warning. As you've seen earlier, my opponent is sophisticated and clever. She will seek to persuade you with apparently convincing arguments that she's right. But fortunately, the new American administration has woken us up to realize that smart, knowledgeable, and especially Cambridge-educated people are, in fact, simply peddling fake news. <laughs> Luckily, they've also taught us to pronounce China properly. <laughs> I mean, look at it. Who but a copycat would name their country after fine European cups and saucers? <laughs> and do you know how to say cat in Chinese? Meow, meow. In Europe, we think up our own words. They just copy the cat, which, mind you, is better than grabbing it, as some Americans do. Um, and they claim they have a great wall. Everyone knows there are better and older walls out there. The Roman Emperor Hadrian built one to keep the Scots out of England, although in a couple of years it's going to be used the other way around. And talking of America's closest allies, Russia built a great wall, a beautiful wall, in Berlin, way before China built theirs. Uh, I heard that on Fox News, so it must be true. <laughs> And I'm sure Donald Trump had his idea for the greatest wall of all way before the Chinese. Anyway, it's not just walls. Who here has spent time in Asia and not been offered a copy watch? <laughs> if you're interested, see me afterwards. Um, I've, also got a, I've also got a Peking duck. Um, made in China, of course. And, and talking of plastic toys, have you ever seen the queues outside an Asian McDonald's when a new line of collectible Hello Kitties is launched? A whole continent of copy kitties. So being serious for a moment, well, semi-serious, um, to prepare for this debate, I did detailed research for relevant articles online, a full cat scan, if you like. Loads of fake articles about how the Chinese started off as copycats but are now becoming innovators in their own right. Clearly nonsense. I didn't see one innovative thing in Alex's presentation earlier. Just things the West has chosen not to do. <laughs> but what if they are right? And let's face it, it's not just China. Just about every Asian country is a copycat. Let me ask the audience. If there are 10 copycat Asian countries and one becomes an innovator, how many copycats will be left? How many? None, because they'll all copy each other, and they'll all become innovators. And then when, where does that leave us? We'll all be too busy arguing about Brexit and Frexit and how few hours a week we should work and how young we should retire with pensions our governments can't afford. And this nonsense, I bet you, Asia will not copy. <laughs> and now China's fast moving to a new level of copycattery, copying the 19th century Europeans, 20th century Americans, to become the unrivaled 21st century economic and geopolitical superpower. Bloody cheek! This was not part of the plan when we started asking them to make cheap plastic Christmas toys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Martin. Alex, 
Over to you. Hard to follow, but I'm going to try. <laughs> Asia did copy. There is no great surprise there, and there's no need to pretend otherwise. But how does copy explain growing a country 40 times in GDP in 40 years? Where did we copy that from? Where on earth did it happen? So for decades, Asia and China have been playing catching up. We were that kid in school wanting to play football with the team, but never get picked. We're too skinny. We're not strong enough. How do you run fast and score fast when you can't even feed your nation well? We had to catch up first. So what does anyone who wants to become the best player do? They watch the start, they imitate, and they practice hard. So Asia and China did. As the kid gets better and better, but he realized one thing. The way this Westerner plays does not suit his genetic build. <laughs> <laughs> does not suit our genetic build. The Asian consumer want cheaper products, they want easier experiences, they want pay with their mobile, and they want to, to be delivered the next day. So that's one true stereotype for you. The Asians are impatient. We had to innovate for cost efficiency, for user experiences. We had to innovate to satisfy the ferocious demand of Asian customers, to, to stay ahead of the competition, ferocious competition in Asia. So let me give you a few examples. Huawei sold 10 times more than iPhone in Finland last year in the first quarter. Not only that, they've been recognized as the early leader for developing 5G network, 60 times more faster than the current 4G one. Dajiang, another company you probably didn't heard of, but they produce 70% of the flying drones. And I quote LA Times, a Westerner paper, and you can Google that. Um, they are putting recreational drone flying on the map. And WeChat, We've mentioned many times, redefine the hybrid of e-commerce and social media. And together with Alipay, they're charging ahead to push the mobile payment frontier. Well, without innovation, this company would not search to the international stage. In fact, they wouldn't even search domestically. And I'm here to urge you to ditch the outdated view of Asia and copycats. And I believe that's the reason why you're sitting here wanting to learn about Asia with wit. So you already know which side of the debate you're on. And I'm, I am also inviting you to learn, and inno learn from each other and learn, innovate together. Advancement in technology is a global collective asset. And the field is big enough for all of us to play. Thank you. No jokes. OK. So do you want to both stand up? All right. So let's do the applause meter. All right, so who is for Martin, who argue that Asia, China is a copycat, it is not an innovator? Who is for Martin? <laughs> and who is for Alex, the small kid? I guess the winner is the small kid who's grown up and practiced hard. <laughs>